What's up? A to Z Sports Load post training camp practice uh, update observation video here. Uh, Austin Stanley, Sam Phelan here right at St. Thomas Sports Park after the Titans wrapped up a training camp practice Saturday, August 3rd. Uh, back in pads again for the third time that we have seen them out here on the practice field. And so going through some training camp observations, I'll tell you what we saw, including uh, a guy returning to the field and wearing a helmet for the first time since October, uh, which was pretty wild. Will Levis maybe catching a groove with the offense, a little Calvin Ridley discussion as well. This is brought to you by Smoky Mountain Tops, our training camp sponsor for A to Z Sports so far this summer. Uh, go check out and get uh, your kitchen and or bath countertops updated by calling the pros at Smoky Mountain Tops. Family owned and operated for 30 years. Smoky Mountain Tops has installed over 100,000 projects. You've seen their work in Bridgestone Arena and Newland Stadium. So check them out, SmokyMountainTops.com. You can also find them, the Handstone Apemio Quartz Collection, in both Nashville and Knoxville studios. Once again, SmokyMountainTops.com and tell them that A to Z Sports sent you. So, Sam, I'll let you start off. The offense, I thought, looked its best in a full padded practice of the three that we've seen. Yeah, I would agree. I think the offense improved a lot today, and it really started for me up front. Uh, I think a lot of these practices that we've seen, the conversation about the offense has been about the offensive line and pass protection and the fact that it feels like defenders are getting in the backfield with a lot of consistency. Will Levis has not been able to do much against the first no. team defense. And today I feel like that began to shift a little bit. Levis had a little bit more time to throw. He did a nice job evading some pressure. And then Austin, I also thought the Titans offense pushed the ball down the field more frequently than we've seen them so far. It's been a lot of underneath a lot of balls to the outside, get the ball to the sideline. Uh, and today I felt like Will Levis was letting it rip a little bit. They had a lot of vertical routes and use guys like Traylon Burks and even Nick Westbrook Akine yeah. at times to take some shots. Yeah, and, and uh, Chig had a great drag route, yeah. deep drag route that Will Levis layered nicely. He stepped up in the pocket to avoid some pressure from Harold Landry to make that happen too. So I thought this was a very complete day from Will Levis. He started off really hot, went through the first – 11-on-11 uh, 11 11 and 7-on-7, seven seven, really strong. Did back to 11-on-11, 11 11, completing a lot of good passes as well. And then he kind of hit a spurt where he threw a pick. It was not a good throw at all. Yeah. Like, threw Jack Gibbons' hands. Elijah Molden got the pick. He was looking for Burks. He and Burks also had a kind of a goofy, awkward throw and catch miss in exchange on a play-action pass. They're working third and one. It's wide open wide on the open. left side. Nobody within the television screen of Traylon Burks and I don't know if the ball had too much air or Burks didn't know how deep Levis was going to throw, but miscommunication and the ball fell. But overall, Will Levis looked really, really strong today. And the offensive line, to your point, I think uh, they looked really strong too. In red zone, uh, there was the third down or, or the first and 10 from the 12-yard line period that all three quarterbacks, all three offensive units went through. It only took Levis and his group one play. play. Tony Pollard, a 12-yard touchdown run. So that hadn't been happening with the O-line. Uh, and maybe Dylan Radins at right guard. Does that have something to do with it? Well, Sadiq Charles was out today. Uh, yep. Sadiq Charles missed today's practice for personal reasons, according to head coach Brian Callahan before practice. But like you said, Dylan Radins stepped up. Like Dylan Radins was in there at right guard, and running right yep. was the movement for the Titans today for a lot of their big plays. So uh, kudos to Radins. And I think it's worth noting as well during that red zone period you mentioned, first and goal for, or first down from the 12 yard line, all three offensive units got a touchdown as well. It took Will, Will Levis one play, but both Mason Rudolph and Malik Willis also threw touchdowns, which kind of leads to that offensive improvement. Mm -hmm. While Will Levis did miss some throws, uh, some of those were to Calvin Ridley. And Austin, I, yeah. I am getting very, very excited about Calvin Ridley in the Titans uniform, even more so than I was when they first signed him. Because the reason Will Levis is struggling to find his timing with Calvin Ridley right now, struggling to figure out how to be accurate throwing the ball to Calvin Ridley is because the guy is so dang fast. I mean, he is one, of, maybe the fastest receiver I have seen in a Titans uniform since I started covering the team. Yeah, well, you've only been around this, what, year three? Year three for so, me. Uh, this it's is, a limited, limited yeah. time frame, and we know the receiving room hasn't been all that great. But, I mean, Calvin Ridley does move different than he the does. rest of the guys in the receiving core. And his ability to get in and out of breaks, to stop on a dime, there's nobody that he cannot run by. And it's like they're doing one-on-ones or even full team period. If Calvin Ridley just runs a go route straight down the sideline, it's difficult to cover. Like he, a good throw can, it's going to be yeah, there. Yeah. And so Will Levis right now is trying to figure out like, 
when to release that ball. One thing Brian Callahan talked about before practice was like, it's a very unique challenge for a young quarterback because what you don't realize is that guy is like a full rotation faster than everybody yeah. else are used to yeah. throwing the ball to. So timing up when to release it, how much you got to put under it. That's a progress that that's a system that will take progress throughout training camp. And when Will Levis gets there, when that starts to become second nature of knowing what a Calvin Ridley shot looks like, and feels like for his arm, scary hours for oh, anybody trying to defend it. The last rep of one on ones, Ridley. I don't remember who the DB was. I've got the video. I can go back and look, but Ridley just blew by whoever it was, and Levis overshot him. Uh, maybe a little bit too much arm on that one. And then in seven on seven, you saw, back, I think it was back to back plays. Yeah. Ridley back shoulder catch. It was the perfect throw. Literally back to back. It, it, two and then, different routes. Yes. And then <laughs> like, you saw the very next play, the, the threat of Ridley's speed, who just went deep to play before for back shoulder sideline catch, busts off the ball and is able to get a lot of separation for about a 10 yard grab on a stick route. So I like yeah. what Calvin Ridley has. Jim Wyatt asked him after practice today, he's like, how fast were your parents? <laughs> and he said, he said his mom ran a five flat 40 and dad ran a four five. And then he said, Ridley said his fastest was four three. And he said he doesn't have to run a 40 now. He won't run a 40 now. He just knows he's fast. Yeah. Uh, and I think we can all confirm that Calvin Ridley is fast, the fastest Titans receiver that Sam's seen in three years. He's one of the fastest. I'd have to go all the way back. I mean, you're talking about like Nate Washington is maybe the next fastest guy that I've seen in my over 10 years of covering the team. And they're different types of speed. Nate was more of a track speed, I yeah. feel like. Ridley is more of a quirky, weird, explosive, quick speed. He's got the long speed too, but you just can't read where he's going to break out of a route. It's very impressive. He's a super efficient route runner, and it's kind of a nice little change of pace from another guy that I thought had a really good day today in Tyler Boyd. Yeah. Tyler Boyd had multiple like really big catches one of them was like a little shallow crossing route that he ran during full team period it looked like will levis was in trouble but he hung in the pocket never got sacked got the ball off and tyler boyd burned roger mccreary all the way down the field he just ran free for like a 70 yard touchdown that was one of uh, a number of plays that i felt like boyd made today so encouraging for titans fans out there i mean if you're a little bit worried hey no d hop right day one without d hop calvin ridley's making plays tyler boyd's making plays Traylon burks you know had his name called a few I, times as well too Traylon had a really nice diving catch over the middle that was the throw maybe a little bit off from levis but had to full extend and you don't see guys do that in training camp practice that often but a full extension to go get the football and secure it rolled on his shoulder to kind of show the ref hey i got this thing uh, underneath, but yeah. uh, on the Boyd catch, I believe that was a third and about four or five. And you see Boyd doing what we think his role is going to be is right. a third and intermediate type first down converter, but he took it and busted past uh, Roger McCreary and Elijah Molden and others for a 70 something yard touchdown. Yeah. The problem with Denard Wilson's defense sometimes maybe, right? There's a lot of pressure and, and if you get the right route, nobody's home well, on the and back I, end. And, I, and I've been wanting to ask a defensive player, like what happens if all 11 guys are too aggressive? And yeah. I think the answer is Tyler Boyd has a 70 yard touch. And nobody's on that side of the field exactly. because Tyler Boyd is not the fastest guy no. uh, in the world. He is not Calvin Ridley. Like we're talking about here. Nope. You will hardly ever see Tyler Boyd running away from all these players for a, at, at this stage in his career yep. with like a really long touchdown, but he was that free to run and, uh, you know, just outran Roger McCreary. Um, another guy on the defensive side of the ball, I think flashed today for me was Chance Campbell. Austin, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chance Campbell had a sack. He had uh, a near interception a couple of times. He also had a really nice stand on the, like a PBU and a tackle mm -hmm. on the goal line during that red zone period. So full team, like first and goal from the two chance Campbell was making plays to keep the Titans offense at bay temporarily. So uh, 45 flashed and, you know, an interesting inside linebacker room, a guy who I think Titans fans maybe forgot about a little yeah. bit that he's here and he's in the mix too, but encouraging to see him making plays. And he sacked Levis. And I was like, yeah. wait a second. That's, I don't know. Remember the last time chance Campbell got like a, <laughs> right. a starting quarterback defensive rep, but he did. Uh, on Levis. Any other notes uh, that you have before we get out of here? Well, NPF was back today. NPF, the first time Nicholas Petit-Ferrer has put on a helmet since October, and uh, he was a good 
good time at the podium. Talk to the media. And I, yeah, it's I also just, the first time he's talked to you guys yeah, since October. <laughs> really, really interested talking to NPF. I actually asked him about, you know, the kind of the experience he went through that this time last year with the suspension for gambling that, uh, you know, kept him out. And then he had to work his way back into practice earn his way back into a starting role. And now he's missed all of this time throughout the off season, all of this new install of Brian Callahan's offense, all of this potential work with Bill Callahan that everybody's been raving about. And yep. it's such a, a key piece of who makes this Titans team. NPF has been out for that. And now that he's back on the field, does he feel like he is mentally equipped to take on the challenge of, hey, I'm behind the eight ball, but I have to earn a starting job? I thought it was really interesting, Austin. He said, well, I've done it twice. Why not a third time? Yeah, no, no. seemed like he has a lot of confidence, but mainly just a guy who's excited to be out here. Um, I think Titans fans and media and everybody here would agree. Like, it's just nice to have Nicholas back on the field and going through reps and working in his way at right tackle. They're going to need him from what we've seen early in training camp. Yeah. I think he's the favorite to still be the starter. Yeah, I think it's good for this team to have another option at right tackle. They needed it. No Sadiq Charles today, like you mentioned earlier. So Dylan Radin's got a lot more run. And so you saw NPF and John Ajuku working right tackle a lot of times with Will Levis and then Mason Rudolph, the second team. So uh, I think that probably about does it, right? Yeah. That's my notes. Yep, that's it. Well, uh, great stuff here from Saturday's practice. Titans back on the practice field on Sunday morning, and then we'll be back Monday morning, A to Z Sports at 8 o'clock on the same YouTube channel. Buck Ryan's going to be live uh, at uh, Sunday night at 7 p.m. Go check out A to Z Sports.com. Sam's got some observations coming out. Buck working on an NPF story as well, and social media galore everywhere. Make sure you like the show, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It goes a long way for us, and we'll see you guys on a Monday morning, if not at camp on Sunday. Thanks. Appreciate it.